Hi Wonderclass and welcome to our final week of learning about the Romans and Bob. So in today's lesson we are going to be exploring what the public Roman baths were used for. So last week you got to explore using, hopefully you used Google Earth, to explore the different um, places in, in Bath and now we're going to explore exactly what the Roman baths were used for during the Roman times. So here is a picture you can see of a Roman bath and they are really, really big. So what you're going to do is click onto this link. Now, when you click this link, it will then bring you to this page that looks like this. And here you will be able to watch a video <clears throat> of a lady who is visiting the city of Bath, the Roman Bath itself. So I'm not going to play the video because of copyright. So their link will be posted underneath um, your YouTube video for you to have a look at and to explore. So let's head back over to our lesson. Okay, so once you've watched the video, we will then be able to carry out this activity. So here is a template of um, the pictures and things that you're going to be exploring. So I'm going to give you some information. Now, it's up to you if you want to create your own um, template that looks like this on a piece of paper, or if you would like to um, write it down under subheaded, it's totally up to you how you organize the information. But the point of the lesson is to just collect information on ancient Roman baths and what they were like. So the origins of Roman baths. So baths were used as a place to swim and pray to the goddess Minerva, who was the Ro who the Romans believed had healing qualities. So did you have to pay to get in? So do you think that you have to pay to get into those baths? Well, there was a fee to get into the public baths. The fee was generally pretty small, so even the poor could afford to go. Sometimes the baths would be free as a politician or emperor would pay for the public to attend. So a little bit like a swimming pool or the swimming baths when they're open, um, we do have to pay a very small amount of money to go into those um, swimming pools. However, during the Roman times, if a politician or emperor paid, they would pay enough money for the public to attend. So then that means that they would be able to go in for free. And here's another picture of the Roman baths. So what were the Roman baths actually used for? So we know that we have um, might have showers. Some of us might be lucky to have bathtubs in our homes. So we get in the bath to clean ourselves. Let's see what we can find out about this. So getting clean. The main purpose of the baths was a way for the Romans to get clean. Most Romans living in the city tried to get to the baths every day to clean up. They would get clean by putting oil on their skin and then scraping it off with metal scrapers called a striggle. So in the picture below, you can see a striggle. And what, what they would do is they would put the oil onto their skin and then scrape their skin with this striggle. And that would take off any of the excess skin or dirt that was on their skin. And then they would be able to wash it off in the water. Socialising. So another reason why the Romans went to these baths were it was a place for socialising. So friends would meet up at the bath to talk and have meals. Sometimes men would hold business meetings or discuss politics. It was just a place for people to also relax. So how did they put the um, water into the bath? Now, these baths were massive, not like the ones in your homes. So the Romans built aqueducts. So that shows us the purpose of having an aqueduct. So aqueducts were to carry fresh water from lakes or rivers to the city. Roman engineers constantly monitored the water levels and aqueduct to make sure there was enough water for the city and the bath. They even had underground pipes and sewage systems. Wealthy people were able to have running water in their homes. So that's another reason um, how they filled up these baths. <coughs> so you can see another picture of the aqueduct. Here are some fun facts. So one of the most famous Roman baths was in Bath, which is in England. The bath was built on hot springs that were said to have healing powers. So the water itself had um, sort of healing powers is what the Romans believed. Men, men, and men and women bathed at different times or in different areas of the bath. They weren't in the same place altogether. The floors of the bath were heated by the Roman system called a hypercourse that circulated hot air under the floors. Hmm, this might make you remember one of the Roman inventions. Can you think what I'm going to tell you? That's right, the Romans, if you said it, did invent central heating. So they obviously invented ways of heating things up. So the Romans bath on the flooring of the bath was heated, which would then keep all of the water also warm. Items were often stolen in the bath by pickpockets and thieves. So 
lots of people would take off certain maybe jewellery and things like that and leave it on the side in order to go into the bus and sometimes people would steal those unfortunately. So there were different types of Roman bus. Let's have a look at the different types. So they had, I would call it a tapedarium. Afterwards, you would go to the tapedarium. This was a cooler room where you could relax, chat and chat to your friends. You could also get a massage from the slaves. You would clean all the sweat and grease off your body using a strigle. So this water um, was a cooler room and not so hot. Um, a caldarium, first you would go into the caldarium. This was the hottest room in the Roman bath. It was a bit like a jacuzzi. The hot water and steamy air temperatures may have risen well above 40 degrees Celsius. It would be this hot so that you could sweat out the dirt. So <clears throat> lots of you are still very young, but when you get a little bit older, you'll be able to go into a jacuzzi, a steam room or a sauna. And those are places that you're able to get really hot and really sweaty and your skin gets a good clean. Frigidarium. <coughs> Finally, you would go to the Frigidarium. This was a freezing cold bath to refresh the Romans. The Romans would feel very refreshed after plunging into the freezing water. So this was another type of Roman bath. So there are different types of Roman baths. So what you're going to do for today's lesson is you can use the template seen at the beginning of the video as an example, or you can make your own to collect information on the modern on the Roman bath. So I want you to have a think so you can go back through all of the information and see if you can find out some facts. So the pictures are just to lead you through the video, but, um, include some fun facts. You can include the different types of Roman baths, what the baths were used for, um, how much did they cost, and anything that you think that you um, find valuable to understanding all about the Roman baths. So good luck with your activity, and I look forward to seeing your work and how you've decided to lay it out on tapestry. That's all from me today. Bye, everyone.